Okay, cool. Yeah, so um, what we have now, can you move away? <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, so what we have now here it's not is... recording. Oh, snap, thanks, man. Yeah. So, okay. <laughs> so what we have here is what we call a network analyzer. So it's an instrumentation, these two things here. They operate at different frequency and they're different age. So this one is a much older one than this one here. So this device allows us to characterize microwave components, you know, be it passive or active, meaning an amplifier filter. And what I'm doing here, the demonstration that I'm going to do for you guys today is to show you how to actually measure some micro devices, and I'm just going to focus on filters, uh, filters today because they are much simpler given the amount of time that we have to measure this. Okay, so if you guys can just focus on this one here for the time being, can I stand here? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, just be careful you don't knock it. Okay, so this device here is a network analyzer that only goes up to 8.5 gigahertz. So we can't measure any micro device that operates above that temperature, uh, temperature. that, that uh, frequency, 8.5 gigahertz. And what I'm currently measuring is this micro strip fault over here. See, so you guys see? Remember I showed you, that I told you that the micro strip is a type of transmission line that carries <coughs> an electric um, microwave signal from point A to point B. So this here is a filter and you have the transition from a coaxial cable onto a microwave transition, right? Which is uh, defined by this length here and this uh, U-shaped uh, microstrip, sorry, microstrip. So coaxial to microstrip transition, okay? And then you have what we call resonators. Resonators are basically microwave devices that store electromagnetic energy in them and only that energy which is at the right frequency will pass through that particular um, resonator. So the resonators are U-shaped and they are coupled together uh, using capacitive couples and, and, and uh, inductive coupling. I think this one is capacitive coupling, so it's coupled together like that. So one resonator would be that <coughs> shape and the other resonator would be that and that, that, that. So there would be one, two, three, four, five resonators. And the more resonators you couple together, the, the more bandwidth you have. See, so if you look here, I'm showing you guys the reflection coefficient at port one. So S11, remember we spoke about S parameters. This device uh, analyzes the, uh, characterizes the microwave component in terms of their S parameters. So um, S11 is the reflection coefficient at port one. And then S2, S, S22 is the reflection coefficient at point two. So ideally, the filter, if it's symmetrical, the reflection co coefficient on both sides should be exactly the same, shows should the transmission coefficient be the same as well. So uh, there is a slight change in the reflection coefficient between S11 and S S22, and that could just be due to the matching here, you see. So maybe errors in the length of the, uh, of the, the micro strips. Yeah. So I'm just showing you the transmission coefficient, uh, the reflection coefficient, and I can also show you the transmission coefficient by selecting to measure the transmission coefficient. So the transmission coefficient says that you have uh, an achievement, <coughs> so 10 to the negative 70 here. So all the signals that are not within this flat table part here are going to be attenuated by this decaying portion of the, of the, of the trace, you see? So only the signals that are within this window will be, will, will be allowed to go through this particular folder, right? And the center frequency of this folder is around about, if I go to say frequency, so start uh, center frequency, I can ask the network analyzer to tell me, it's around about uh, 570, 575 megahertz center frequency, okay? Uh, and then you can calculate the, the bandwidth by just taking the difference in the frequency and it will tell you how wide uh, a range you have of frequencies which the photo will allow the signals to go through through it, it. okay? So that's one part. And then uh, you can view various 
you can display various property of the filter. For example, I've showed you the reflection coefficient and I showed you the transmission coefficient through the filter. And I can also show you what's called the group delay of the filter, the phase of the filter, etc. So if I go to format, I can talk about the phase of the filter. So it shows you that it has a linear phase. So that's a typical characteristic of, uh, of, of these uh, filters which have linear phase. And I can also show you that we have five resonators by counting the peaks, the dips, sorry, on the reflection coefficient, so one, two, three, and the other one is really very well hidden. Uh, they're, they're kind of like merged, two, two of them merged together, so, they, they, so they're not easily seen, but it is there. So there's one, two, three, four, and then the fifth one is some, it's not well tuned, that's what I meant to say. So if it's not well tuned, it kind of like it's masked, it's hidden. So, so uh, we have that, we can, calculate, we can look at the group delay of the filter, which is a typical characteristic where have these two peaks and then a nice flat uh, time uh, in the filter, uh, in, the, in, the, in the frequency range of interest. And we can look at the Smith chart, for example, the Smith chart to see the matching of the filter. So you have this really funny, I don't, if you guys, you guys know about the Smith chart obviously? Mm -hmm. Yeah, which is just the resistance, inductance, capacitance, and then you use the matching the circuit. So at that point, wherever that point is on the filter, which is here, the filter seems to be very well matched, and it's shown here by, by there being no reflection at all, you understand? Oh, sorry, there's, there's a total reflection there, so I don't know where, which point it is, excuse me. Yeah, that, that is where there's, there shouldn't be any reflection because it's well matched. Yeah. So basically, you can look at various ways of, of actually displaying the result of the filter and the property of the filter depending on what you want, what information you want. Okay. So this is this uh, tiny little device here and then we move on to the much more expensive, much more, uh, how do I say, uh, the network analyzer that operates at the higher frequency and um, also much more sensitive device. And one of the issues with this particular one is that every time we start it up, we have to do a calibration. Every single time we start it up, we have to do a calibration for that one. I've started it up. What happens to the reflection coefficient when these, these uh, cables are usually shorted or opened up? It should be just a very flat line at zero, meaning all the signals being reflected. But when you start it up, it never, it never, it's never really like that. So you have to, to do a calibration before doing a measurement every single time. And you can save your calibration and then call your calibration so you can do your measurement. But every now and then it's good to always redo the calibration so you can you can remove all the systematic errors uh, out of uh, the system before doing um, before measuring your actual device. So this is the calibration kit that um, <coughs> to, to calibrate this particular uh, network analyzer. And um, if you want to learn how the kit works, you download the manual for the kit, which I have here. And what you have inside this kit is uh, various standards, right? So you have uh, the first standard. So it's called, this calibration kit is a salt cal kit, right? Salt meaning, salt tells you uh, what processes you should follow when actually calibrating. So salt stands for short, open, load, and true, right? And that refers to these standards that we have here, see? So this is a short standard. So if I plug this onto there, onto one of the, uh, cables, this uh, coaxial cable here. I would be putting a short at the end of the cable. And if I plug this one in there, I would be uh, connect this one in there, I'm going to be putting an open. And if I connect this one, I'll be putting a load. And if I connect this one, I'll be putting in a true. So to, to, to basically measure whether the signal is going from this one to that one. So once, you, once you've done this calibration process, you then ready to do your measurement. So there's a whole procedure on how to go about doing the calibration process itself. And this is just a, an accessory box that is used to, uh, that has, contains various uh, um, type of connect, connectors and adapters that you will have to use in order for you to do uh, a, a measurement. For example, I had to, to use these two adapters, right? So these are male to male, and what's the other? Yeah, male to male adapters for, for SMA connectors, and they're particularly uh, used for this particular, for this type of cables. Okay. <coughs> so, after doing the calibration process, I've now connected 
I think this is an X band filter, which uh, what frequency is it operating at? Let me see. What does um, like SMA and SMP mean? SMA. Yeah. It's, I forgot what it stands for, but it basically just this type of cable. So SMP would be a different type of SMA, maybe just a smaller version of it. Yeah, so if you go and just Google SMA and SMP, I forgot what it stands for. I just know that when I'm referring to SMA, I'm referring to a type of coaxial cable that looks like this. Yeah, so for example, this, this would be an SMA, this would be a BNC. I understand, like I forget what this stands for. An SMP would be a, uh, it's, it's an SMA but a smaller version of it. And it. There's a reason why they call that, but you can just go and Google it yourself. Okay. So anyway, um, I've, after doing this, uh, let me just go to where is the frequency here. Frequency. <coughs> so let's say center frequency. <coughs> so this, yeah. So this is this filter operates in the in the. It's also an X band filter. Interesting. So this is also an X band filter, and it's operating in the frequency range. It's, it has a center frequency of nine point two, so uh, nine thousand two hundred and fifty mega megahertz. That's what this filter operates on. And this device is, is much more user friendly. It's also touch screen, um, and you can also have multiple displays, unlike that one. So it's a, it's a much much better device. And the difference between this one and that one. Besides the frequency range, which is a major difference, this goes up to 67 gigahertz, whereas that one only goes to like 8.5 gigahertz. So this goes to the millimeter uh, frequency range, you see. And then um, this one here only has two ports. Remember, a port is just one of is just uh, one of these connectors that has a positive and negative, right? So this one has two ports. This one has four ports. One, two, three, four. Very expensive, flexible cables that gives you a much bigger band radius than such a cable would give you, you see. So you can damage this cable much easily than you can damage something like this. So very expensive um, instrument. And you always have to ground yourself, right? You don't want to be discharging at the tips of the, these cables. Ground yourself just before using a network analyzer. So this is a grounding strap that you use. And occasionally when you come in here, before connecting your device, you take one of these and you open up here this is not going to touch it up so you close it off because of the dust okay and you open up here okay open up there and you blow it with the duster you wipe it off before using it you can see there's a lot of dust that is collected if you look here some dust have collected on top of this connector here so you always want to keep it close because you don't want dust in there because dust can be conductive as well you can play it okay so this is that instrument here, but this is one of the most wide used instruments in all of our, oh, this was already in the way. <laughs> one of the most wide used instrument in microwave engineering. Like you cannot get rid of network analyzers. It's used to characterize microwave devices. All the microwave devices, they can be characterized using a network analyzer. Yeah, so that's that. And then we have other instrumentation here. So, uh, but the radar group, is the one that works with most of the other instrumentation, yes? Uh, do you guys make the micro strips here? Uh, so, Trax, there's a company called Trax, they would be making this PCB okay. related kind of stuff, yeah. So, yeah, so the company called Trax, they would be making these, these kind of, yeah. So, um, 